Thanks for that rally. A woman's death now being investigated as a homicide. 33-year-old Felicia Harris was found dead at Meadowbrook Park Saturday. Autopsy results released just a few hours ago show Harris had been shot at least once. A suspect has not been named. Our Celeste Springer live in the newsroom now. And Celeste, what can you tell us with this update? Felicia Harris was found at Meadowbrook Park on Saturday. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office says the body was reported to them at around 1.13 p.m. The case was initially deemed a suspicious death, but is now being investigated by the Richmond County Coroner's Office as a homicide. They say Harris was shot at least once. On Saturday, dozens of friends and family members gathered here at the scene to mourn her death. Data gathered by the National Center for Transgender Equality shows at least 28 transgender people were murdered or died suspiciously from January until August. And coming up tonight at 6 and 11, we'll hear more from the people closest to her, including about an incident where she once risked her life getting her family out of a fire. So many family members and friends just want answers. Again, no suspect. Thanks for that update, Celeste. Another deadly shooting this weekend, this one happening at the Augusta Mall. Tony Burton, he is charged with murder in that case. He had his first appearance in court today. He will have a bond hearing coming up in Superior Court. We also got these numbers today from the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. Since January, there have been 430 incidents in all at the Augusta Mall alone. That averages out to about a call and a half every day this year. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going through safety protocol for the stores and security at Augusta Mall. Lawmakers still working on a second coronavirus. But first, this evening, a deadly shooting at the Augusta Mall over the weekend leaves people running for their lives. Now some are wondering if it's safe enough to go back. 26-year-old Daryl Little was shot multiple times Saturday. He later died at the hospital. Today, the suspect in his murder, 37-year-old Tony Burton, was in court. His case now being sent to Superior Court for a bond hearing. Sydney Heiberger's live force at the Augusta Mall with more of how officials are responding. Well, Richard, life here at the mall goes on after a scary shooting on Saturday that killed one man and injured an innocent bystander. She took a shot in the leg. I did speak to one mall employee today, though, who told me he's a little bit on edge going back to work today, and he's asking the mall to take more safety measures. You used to feel safe um, when I go to the mall, but now I don't. For mall workers like Osmond Pascal, I was there when they first started the confrontation. Saturday was a day he'll never forget. I don't even feel safe going to the mall right now because I don't know if it's going to happen again. In order to feel safe, Pascal says he wants armed deputies patrolling the mall at all times and metal detectors at every entrance. The security team that they have there, it's a contract security team, and the only thing that they can do is call the shut department. But if they would have had the shut department there and first responders there, I think it would, the turnout would have been a little different. The Richmond County Sheriff's Department says the mall requests special duty officers on Friday and Saturday night. But when we asked the mall if they provide officers on any other days of the week, we didn't get an answer. We never went through any active duty training. But they do call it once a month and say if we see something, report something. But others, like Melinda Crody, think increasing mall security would do more harm than good. There will be racial profiling incidents. There will be, um, you know, incidences where people feel like they were wrongly searched. Well, you can have all the security in the world, but these things are still going to happen because this is, a, this is not just Augusta's problem. It's America's problem. In a statement that we obtained from the mall today, they said they're always reviewing their uh, their security program and are always making changes to that. But what exactly those security protocols are, they told us they couldn't say. Reporting in Augusta, Sydney Heiberger, on your side. Thank you, Sydney. And from burglaries to vandalism, even rape. Data analyzed by our I team shows the weekend shooting is not an isolated incident. In fact, the I team found from 2019 and 2020, the Augusta Mall had the most calls for service from the Richmond County Sheriff's Office month after month, more so than any other private property. Will Rio breaks down those numbers. I'm across the street from the Augusta Mall where just a few days ago, a shooting incident left an individual dead. 
Now that's shining a spotlight on the mall's security and crime rates and just how safe the public really feels at these malls. It needs to stop. I know it can't stop, but it's outrageous right about now. Shabazz Ali is a community activist and has his own foundation, At Risk Youth of Augusta, Georgia. He feels the mall isn't what it used to be. The mall is, 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 is not safe, and I don't know what can we do to make it a little bit more safer than what the sheriff has already put in place. The I team analyzed data from 2019 and 2020 and found the Augusta Mall has the most call for service from the Richmond County Sheriff's Office month after month, more so than any other private property. It's also one of the largest properties in their jurisdiction with about 150 different retail stores located within it. Crime rate is still probably gonna go up before Christmas time. We don't know, we can't predict that. We can slow it down if we just put some plans and action and we come together as a city and community we are 279 days into 2020. There has been 430 incidents so far this year. That averages out to a call and a half a day just to the mall. And that's making some families feel like... Scared. That's kind of scary. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office's records on violent crimes at the Augusta Mall over the past four years shows 12 different incidents, with 2020 seeing the most violent crimes. Andre Elston and his fiance say they feel like the shootings are getting worse. I've seen an increase of, of shootings shootings. Um, I'm hearing it actually and it does seem like it's going up slightly. And Ali thinks crimes like this will keep happening while guns are on the street. It's going to take more than just me, you, the mayor, and, and everybody. It's going to take everybody. Let's, let's put these guns down. Will Rio, on your side. We reached out to several malls around the region. Only one got back to us so far. The Savannah Mall says they do not go through active shooter training with employees and security guards are not armed. On your side. Scott DeVore, who was mentioned in that story, identified as gender fluid, not only known as Scott, but also Scotland. DeVore's death is one of three transgender people killed in our area since August of last year. The most recent, 33-year-old Felicia Harris. She was found shot and killed over the weekend at Meadowbrook Park. An eerily similar death back in August 2019, 24-year-old trans woman LaDime Doe found shot and killed in her car in Allendale County. Celeste Springer, live in our studio, and Celeste, this issue seems to be larger than just our area. National Center for Transgender Equality shows about 47% of black transgender Americans say they've been denied equal treatment, verbally harassed, or physically attacked within the past year. The NCTE also says from January until August of this year, at least 28 transgender people have been murdered or died suspiciously. Felicia Harris, her death now marks her as one of those individuals. Friends of hers say to know her was to love her. They say Felicia started a dance crew and treated all of those members like family. They told her, or they told us even, she even risked her life for her family, jumping into a burning building to rescue her nieces, and she suffered third degree burns from it all. And coming up at 11, we'll hear from an expert on transgender studies. She'll tell us more about the violence trans women face in their own communities. Celeste, thank you very much. We're also keeping an eye on the feeds out of Washington, D.C. this evening.